Hey guys, we're going to continue the Lagrange multiplier series by looking at a slightly harder example. And real quick before we get started, if you find these videos useful, hit the like button and subscribe so you can get more notifications on these. Alright, so let's see this example, which, so the actual technique of Lagrange multipliers is not too hard, hopefully you've noticed that by now, but some examples might be harder in the sense that it might not be clear how to solve the actual system of the equation. So we're going to see um, an instance of that. Alright, so now the problem is find the maximum and minimum possible values. So we want to optimize x to the fourth plus y to the fourth with the constraint x squared plus y squared equals 1. So we're just going to start with our constraint, and that will be our g. So g of xy equals x squared plus y squared equals 1. And then the function we want to optimize, that's f of xy. So x to the fourth plus y to the fourth is what we want to optimize. All right, so now the first step, we take the first partial, so with respect to x, and we get 4x cubed equals lambda times 2x. The next step, we want to take the partials with respect to y. So we get 4y cubed equals lambda times 2y. And then we're just going to remember that our constraint is when g equals 1. So we're going to make sure to keep these three equations together, since these three are what we'll use to actually solve the system of equations. All right, so how do we solve this system? This is what we have. Now, if this was a system of linear equations, you would know very easily how to solve it. You would just do your, your usual method of elimination, and all that. But now it's not so clear because we have cube terms. So the general technique that you want to do is the following. You want to factor it and then you want to look at the cases. So let's look at this first equation. When we factor it we get 2x times 2x squared minus lambda equals 0. Now when you generally have something times something equals 0, the only possibility is if one of the factors equals zero. So now the, the possible cases are 2x equals zero or 2x squared minus lambda equals zero. But we only need one of these to be zero. And for the other equation we do the same thing, we factor it as well. And we get 2y times 2y squared minus lambda equals zero. So that means either the first factor equals zero or the second factor equals zero. And notice we only need to satisfy one of these in each equation in order for us to have a valid solution. And then finally, of course, we do need to satisfy this. So the cases are maybe we satisfy this, we satisfy this, and then we satisfy this, or we satisfy this, satisfy this, and then satisfy this, or we satisfy this, satisfy this, and then satisfy this, or finally we can satisfy this, satisfy this, and then satisfy this. So that's four cases. So we're just going to look at each case and then see what the solutions are. All right, so the first case, we satisfy 2x equals 0, 2y equals 0, and then the last equation, which is x squared plus y squared equals 0. Well, just from these first two equations, we can solve for x and y. So that tells us that x equals 0 and y equals 0. But this doesn't actually satisfy the third equation. So what this means is, in this case, there are no solutions. So we don't need to worry about this case. Now the next case. Instead of taking this factor, 2x equals 0, we take the other factor, 2x squared minus lambda equals 0. And we'll still take 2y equals 0. And we'll still take x squared plus y squared equals 1. So from 2y equals 0, we get that y equals 0. So now let's, let's just plug this into our second equation, or the third equation. So we'll plug it in, we get x squared plus 0 squared equals 1. So we have x equals plus or minus 1. So we didn't even need to use this equation to begin with. And so this gives us that the critical points are negative 1 comma 0 and 1 comma 0, just because x can be plus or minus 1. And you notice that in this equation, whatever x and y 
equal, it'll still satisfy the equation because we don't have a fixed value of lambda just yet. So that's why we don't really need to worry about this. Case three. So this is now, instead we have the other factor, 2y squared minus lambda equals zero, and we take our original factor of 2x equals zero, and then the third equation. But this is actually the same case as this, you're just switching x and y, right? So here you have 2x squared, and here you have 2y squared. Here you have 2y, here you have 2x. So the reasoning is going to be exactly the same, but our solutions instead are now going to be y equals plus or minus 1, and x equals 0. So all we do is we just take them and then switch the coordinates. And now finally, case 4. We have 2y squared minus lambda equals 0, 2x squared minus lambda equals 0, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Well, first we can solve for lambda in the form of 2y squared, so we get 2y squared equals lambda, and we can again solve for lambda over here, so we get lambda equals 2x squared, and then that allows us to cancel some terms, so we get y squared equals x squared. So, in our original equation of x squared plus y squared equals 1, we can plug in for y squared. So we have x squared plus y squared equals x squared plus x squared, because all we did was plug in. And then combining this gives us 2x squared equals 1, which means that x squared equals 1 half and y squared equals 1 half. So the critical points that we get are just the square root of 1 half and then the plus or minus. So x could be plus or minus 1 square root of 1 half and y can be plus or minus square root of 1 half. So these are just those four possibilities. Okay, so now we have a bunch of critical points and you just test them and check what values you get. So you'll, you'll notice that I've only checked two critical points and that's because the other critical points will give you the same value since you're just taking to the fourth power. So the signs don't actually matter. So you can do 1 over square root of 2 plus over square root of 2. Take that to the fourth power, you'll get 1 half. And even if you do negative 1 over square root of 2 or negative 1 over square root of 2 over here, you'll still get the same value. So these are actually the only two values that you get when you evaluate on all, all the different critical points. So then, because this is the smaller value and this is the bigger value, that means this is the global minimum and this is the global maximum. Yeah, so that was all for this problem. So just to recap, what we did was we first took our equations, our three equations, and we factored them. And then we just set each of the factors equal to zero and checked each of the cases. And then once we got all our critical points, we just evaluated them and then check to see what gave us our global minimum and what gave us our global maximum. So that was it. Hopefully this made sense. If you have any questions, just leave them down below. And thanks for watching.